How's it going, Leo? I see you and Dad are almost done with the treehouse. Yeah, but it definitely hasn't been easy. It's been way harder. Oh no! My favorite pair of shorts! Oh, building this treehouse has been beyond frustrating. And now my shorts too. I give up. Oh, Leo, I'm sorry. I didn't realize the treehouse has been such a challenge. And your ripped shorts are an added bummer. I just wish I knew how to fix them. And Mom's not home right now. Hey, maybe an old-timey person will be good at sewing. Why don't we search for an expert? You mean, you actually want to go time-traveling with me? Of course I do. We gotta turn that frown upside down. Ah, this makes sense. I've always seen this name on my jeans. Ooh, let's see if this gentleman can help. Excuse me, sir. Could you please tell us where we could get someone to fix my ripped shorts? I can indeed. My name is Levi Strauss, and I own the company you see right here. I specialize in dry goods and be more than happy to help. Nice to meet you, Mr. Strauss. Yes, Mr. Strauss. My name is Layla, and this is my little brother, Leo. We've traveled here from the future. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. But please, call me Levi. I've always requested my employees do the same. All right, Mr. I mean, Levi. You said you specialize in dry goods. What are those? Dry goods usually include anything other than food or building materials. So my company sells fabric and sewing supplies, as well as items of clothing, like shirts, pants, coats, and hats. Wow, so we have arrived in the perfect place. Levi, how did you get your start in this business? It all began back in my hometown of Butenheim, Bavaria, which is a state in Germany. My father was a very hardworking man who made his living as a door-to-door -door salesman. He would sell supplies needed for sewing, like thread, buttons, and fabric. Nice! So you followed in your father's footsteps. I want to do that too, and maybe start my own business one day, just like our dad. Yes, my brothers and I did eventually continue the family business. My parents wanted me and my six siblings to have a fair shot in life. And regrettably, in the 1840s, there weren't many opportunities for people like us to be successful. People like you? What do you mean? In the time I grew up, the majority of the people who lived in Bavaria were Catholic. My family and I are Jewish. And unfortunately, we were not always accepted members of society. They treated you differently just because of your religion? That's discrimination! Indeed it was, my dear boy. It made life for all of us very challenging. They told us where to live and what jobs we could have. They even banned door-to-door -door selling because they thought it was not a respectable occupation to have. Oh no! What did your family do? We had a comfortable life until my father passed away. Then my mother made the decision for us to move to America because she felt that we stood a better chance there where we could have the same opportunities as anyone else. That's how you ended up here. Not quite. My two brothers had left for New York a few years earlier. They started their own dry goods company and the plan was for the rest of us to join them so that I could start learning the family business too. So many of the men and women we visited during our travels have said that America has always been known as the land of opportunity. And New York sure sounds like it was the place to be for people to make a new start. It definitely was. So at the ripe old age of 19, I set sail with my family to America. Awesome, like a family cruise. Actually, it was very unpleasant and took several weeks. Several weeks? I get restless when we have to travel for more than a couple of hours. I don't think I'd fare well having to be on a boat for that long. The voyage was difficult, to say the least. Because our family was poor, we had to travel in steerage, which means the lowest section of the ship. Let's just say that it wasn't necessarily smooth sailing. <laughs> a bumpy ride? That sounds like fun! No way! That sounds miserable. Did any of the passengers get seasick? Well, they sure did! To make matters even worse, Food and water was scarce, and there was no way for people to bathe. I can tell you that when we landed in New York, we were very happy for many reasons. I got straight to work and I started learning English. It was around that time that I decided to change my name. Wait, your name isn't really Levi? Why did you change your name? I was born Lub Strauss, but I found that Levi was easier for American customers to pronounce. We then started hearing news that gold had been found in the state of California. Many people got gold fever and rushed off to try and strike it rich. We're learning about the gold rush in social studies. Oh, I wish I could have been a miner, panning for gold all day. It sounds like such an exciting time. It was. And my family saw that California presented a new set of opportunities for me to start a West Coast branch of our company. 
And since I was the youngest sibling who wasn't married, it made the most sense for me to embark on the journey to California in my mid-twenties. Wow, so you not only traveled all the way to California by yourself, but then you were in charge of starting a new business all on your own too? No wonder you've been successful, Mr. Stra- I mean, Levi. You were really brave and confident. Actually, I had many worries, but that's part of the process. Whenever anyone starts something new, there is always a period of adjustment. Doubts can enter your mind, but when they do, you have to talk to yourself in a positive way or to remind yourself that it's natural to feel nervous or frustrated, especially when things don't turn out the way you expect them to. That's good to know. Even someone like you, who had tons of experience, still felt frustrated. I'm in the middle of building a treehouse with my dad, and there are times when I just want to give up. Starting something from the ground up is always a daunting task, but with hard work and perseverance, which means having a never-give-up attitude, especially when there are bumps in the road, the path to success becomes a bit easier. So even though there were challenges, you used hard work and determination to succeed. Absolutely. I never let setbacks cause me to lose sight of my goals. I always made sure to run an honest business with quality merchandise. I was very pleased that my supplies were in high demand during the gold rush. Customers trusted me with their business, which came in handy when a man came to me with an exciting new design for pants. Can I take a guess? Does it have to do with blue jeans? You are correct! Around 1872, I received a letter from one of my customers by the name of Jacob Davis. He was a tailor who got a request from a local woman to make more durable pants for her husband. He was a miner who would go through his pants too quickly. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I want to hear what his new design was! Layla, maybe we can use it to fix my shorts! Workers like ranchers, miners, and carpenters complained that their pants were not sturdy enough. Much like you, Leo, their pockets would often rip off easily, especially if they were carrying tools in them. Yeah, it's the worst! Your dilemma is a typical one, my boy. So, Jacob added rivets, or tiny metal fasteners, to the areas that were most susceptible to ripping, like the pockets and uh, near the zipper. I never knew what the rivets were meant to do. I thought they were just for fashion, but now I know they actually serve a purpose. A very important purpose at that. Jacob's pants were an immediate success. And soon, he was selling hundreds of pairs. He came to me looking to go into a partnership. He would be in charge of making the pants for my company, while I would stick to the materials, which was always my area of expertise. Sewing was never my strong suit. And thus, the blue jean was born. Levi, I think you'll be pleased to know that many people in the future wear blue jeans, not just ranchers, miners, and carpenters. They're still super popular. See, I'm even wearing a pair right now. Boy, oh boy. Those sure look different from the ones we are making in the factory right now. Yeah, in the future, they come in all different fits, styles, colors, and washes. Some even come with rips already in them. Rips already in them? But we put the rivets in them to prevent the ripping! I know, right? But for some reason, it's become fashionable. Oh dear. I don't think I'll share that information with Jacob. <laughs> I don't think he'd like that very much. <laughs> Our parents don't like them either. Well, I'm glad that we made a product that has withstood the test of time. With my company becoming more and more successful, I always felt that it was important to give back to the community. I always remember what it was like to grow up with very, very little and feel that it is my duty, now that I have much more, to be generous with causes that are near and dear to my heart. Yeah, our parents and Sunday school teachers are always reminding us of the importance of charity and that we need to donate money, but also donate our time to help others in need. Yes, little Leo. During the Civil War, I was a big supporter of President Abraham Lincoln and believed in his mission to preserve the Union. I made donations to hospitals to help create better conditions for the soldiers who needed medical attention. I also give to orphanages and have created scholarships for students who want to attend college. After all, I truly believe that our country's future is in the hands of young people, just like the two of you. You're a true patriot, Levi. Coming to this country as a hardworking immigrant, creating a successful business, and then giving back in so many ways. What an inspiration. Why, thank you, Miss Layla. And if I can impart my wisdom on you, it would be that life can be tough at times. But it is important for you to be tough as well. When life gives you lemons, try your best to make lemonade. Or when life rips your shorts, add rivets. <laughs> yes, Leo. And now about those shorts. How would you like a pair of our newest jeans? Uh, here's a pair for you too, Layla. 
I think you'll find them to be quite durable while you finish your treehouse. Two horses can't even rip them apart. Thank you, Levi. We've learned so much from you today. And I know Leah will use your advice as soon as we get home. Yes, thank you, Levi. I'll remember not to give up when there are bumps in the road. I need to keep pushing myself so I can accomplish what I set my mind to. Like building the greatest treehouse ever! That's it, Leo. Safe travels to the both of you. I'm so glad you decided to help me finish the treehouse, Layla. Well, like Levi told us, it's important to work hard and help others when you can. I'd like to follow in his footsteps. And to think, you learned all of that just because I ripped my shorts. If you'd like to time travel with Leo and Layla again, please visit PragerUKids.com and watch more of their adventures.